Austin works the sideline and then spilled out short of the 30 yard line. That's where the Steelers will take over. The NFL on CBS streams live on Paramount Plus all season long through Super Bowl 58, including next week's outstanding doubleheader. Try it for free today. Weeks we've wondered about Pittsburgh's balance with receivers. George Pickens, who had been their primary guy, you mentioned earlier in the game on the big game he had against Cleveland, 127 yards, big long touchdown catch. He had been losing catches. Today it's Deontay Johnson, who's not on the board at all. Normally one of their primary targets. Warren, two defenders ready for him, including Taki Taki and Okoronkwo. Jacksonville's going to get judged by the level of competition as we go here. That's the stage that the Jaguars are in. Second and 13, off his back foot. Trying to straddle that sideline is Pickens, and he was out of bounds. Did you see James Daniel, the, the right guard, who normally taps the center to tell him it's good to go on the sideline count? He actually stood up and looked back towards the quarterback before the ball was snapped. They weren't even ready to go on that one. Watch the right guard, 78 in the middle. He's just standing up, look at him, turn and look. Ball snapped. Oh boy. A couple of people were in motion. They're lucky that they're fortunate that it didn't turn into more. Pickett has missed on his last five throws. He is now under 50% in his completion rate. Eight of 17. Third and 13, Pickett, sidearm toss. They're hoping Warren can create, and he can for a first down. 14 yards for the Steelers. And this just can't happen if you're Cleveland. You got everything going your way. Third and 13, you're going to play coverage on it. Where's the rally to go get it? Well, James Daniels erases someone there, 78. Mason Cole just enough in front of him to make it a tough tackle. And the rookie out of Ohio State, number 33, Rodney Hickman gets the tackle, but it's a little bit too late. The Steelers are 13-5 and five in their last 18 games, all of that while averaging 19 points per game. Deontay Johnson trying to get him involved, and a short gain on first down of three and a half yards. Tackled by Martin Emerson, also having an outstanding season for Cleveland. Emerson, Newsom, Ward. These are the players that Mike Tomlin told us that, oh yeah, Cleveland drafted those guys to go against our guys. Yeah. And they saw what we were doing with wide receivers and they addressed it with corners. And they addressed it well because those guys can flat out cover. That last third down notwithstanding, they're used to going into ball games and helping the race receivers. Pick the handoff, pick it, throws. Robinson pushed down by Newsom. Speaking of that secondary, they're so good in the secondary that Greg Newsom, who's really an outside corner and wants to be an outside corner, has been pushed to nickel and really didn't want to play until Jim Schwartz got to him and told him how he could be utilizing this defense. Now you just hear him be have a little joy in playing right now. Likes the spot that he's in and he makes plays for them. And facing another third down. Not going well for the Steelers today. Two out of ten. Pickett gets rid of it. And it is enough for the first down. Deontay Johnson takes it into Cleveland territory. So two things. Jalen Warren helps pick up for Isaac Sayamalo. Watch the, the pass protection there. And second, Kenny Pickett doesn't feel the footsteps from behind and steps into a nice throw to pick up the first down. His toughness on display here today. Number eight for Pittsburgh. Back to the ground game. Harris is met in the hole. Owusu Koromoa with a tackle. It's a gain of one. We are at the 11 and a half minute mark of the fourth quarter. Steelers driving down by three to the Browns. Tell you what, this Steelers team, <laughs> I mean, you talk about understanding a play on words with their team nickname. How many games have they stolen late in this ball in this season? When other teams have outgained them and technically outplayed them, they're trying to be in a position to do it again here today. Give it to Warren. Shake and bake move. Warren off the stutter step. Veers to the outside. Tosses a man down and gets extra yards. Jalen Warren has the balance. He has the burst. 
And he's got another big play for Pittsburgh, 21 yards. He's one of those running backs that I remember when I was playing, my coach used to say, you better bring your pads with him. In other words, you can't just reach out, you can't arm tackle him, you can't just kind of grab him. You've got to put yourself into him and hope you get some assistance along the way because his drink leg drive continues on every step. And we have a break in the action because of an injury. Rodney McLeod, who was the recipient of the angry stiff arm of Jalen Warren. Warren has 119 yards on the ground. He's got 14 yards receiving. See McLeod there. He's reaching out and grabbing at him. And that's the angry stiff arm you just talked about. That could show up sometime soon again in highlights. But you've got to bring pads, wrap up, and hope you get some assistance with Jalen Warren. Rarely is it going to be one-on-one -on -one that he's going to go down easily. He popped his mouthpiece out as well. Yeah, don't need it. That's just extra weight for him at that point. No, I'm saying McLeod. <laughs> he popped his mouthpiece out. Well, he, he would like to have his back. <laughs> when you're getting stiff-armed, you want the mouthpiece in. First down from the 27. Running play. Warren again and again and again. Another first down for the Steelers. That one covers 12 yards. Downstairs to Evan. When we watched Dylan Warren last week, we all got flashes of Austin Eckler. Obviously, same number, similar body type and play style. I asked Jalen about it this week, and he said, Eckler's an inspiration to him. Obviously undrafted, same story, able to become a Pro Bowl caliber player. He loves his game. Obviously, guys don't love comps, but he took that one with a smile. Yeah, it's an excellent comp as well. What I like is Matt Canada recognizing he's the hot guy, keeping him on the field and feeding him the football. Tenth play of the drive, and this time Grant Delpit is up to the task dealing with Jalen Warren. Meanwhile, the injury to McLeod has opened up a spot for Ronnie Hickman, Rookie from Ohio State, undrafted. And now they're going to give him a little bit of a blow. Najee Harris coming to the game, as does Darnell Washington, number 80. That shows it is a heavy set for them. That gives you the impression of running the football. It's often time that you want to fake it and throw it as well. Second and 11. Harris shifts out of the backfield. Protection for Pickett. Breaks down, and Pickett is thrown down by Miles Garrett. Second of the day for Garrett. And the rush was helped because the coverage was exemplary in the back end. He wants Calvin Austin going across field, and they double cover it. They read it well, and that allows the rest of the rush to get home. Miles Garrett's going to add to his statistics on this one. Getting a little bit of help from Maurice Hurst as well. Grant Delpit also coming, but they need to go back and dap up their secondary because they plastered with the receivers and shut it down. And now third and 22. Running play. Harris still going. Harris fighting for it and takes it to the 10. Hit by Ronnie Hickman. Sets up his field goal kicker in much better shape. 40 yards on the ground for Najee Harris. And now Chris Boswell will come out for Pittsburgh onto the field. And look at that. Denzel Ward trying to rip the ball out, but Najee Harris protects it so well. Would he go over 400 runs before the ball ever came out in the NFL? He knows how to take care of the football. It's a 28-yard attempt for Chris Boswell. And he angles it through to tie the game at 10 apiece, 740 to go. Boswell has been so rock solid. Now Chris Boswell will kick it off after the field goal to tie this game at 10 apiece. 3-0 in games decided by three points or fewer. Stay tuned. NFL Today update delivered by Little Caesars. Time permitting, JB, Phil, Nate, Boomer, Coach Cower. Latest NFL scores and highlights. And what a series now for this youngster out of UCLA because I've talked about them throwing some routes at them to push them deeper. Well, the other thing you can do as well, add a little extra protection 
and double move people because Pittsburgh's running to where they think the ball's going to go quickly. Maybe a second move to try and shake people free or a second reaction from the quarterback, DRT. Not a whole lot of offense in this second half. Thompson Robinson for Bryant. You know, that would make him DTR. I better get it right. I thought you came up with a new nickname. Yeah, you know. Flag Illinois down. Of hands to the face. Defense number. Correction. Apologies. Offense number 66. It's a 10 yard penalty. Replay <laughs> first down. That's a tough fake on this crowd, isn't it? Well, we may accept your apology, but <laughs> the crowd inside the stadium is not going to be as forgiving. First penalty of the day against the Browns. That's a tough one, Sean. Did you see him? He's like, oh. Ugh. He knew it. <laughs> Apology. And the penalty on James Hudson. So that negates the pass to Harrison Bryant. And the tough part is if you're Cleveland, which way are you going if you're Kevin Stefanski? Your defense has been so good all the way, but this last drive by Pittsburgh may have taken a little bit out of them. You want to give them a little bit of rest here. And you want to try and find a way to get this ball downfield, but the Pittsburgh defense has played so well here in the second half. First down and 20 back at the 15-yard line. Just over seven minutes to go. Thompson Robinson steps up, and he's brought down. T.J. Watt down low for the sack. But the right tackle, James Hudson, watch how he retreats so far back into the lap of his quarterback. He makes it tough on him to be able to step up and make a play. T.J. Watt, such a fierce rusher to begin with, but Hudson retreats so much that Watt is right back into the face of Dorian Robinson, uh, excuse me, Thompson Robinson. And there's no play to be made there, and there's the first sack of the game for T.J. Watt, I believe. Second down and 22. Shotgun formation here for Thompson Robinson. Deep drop. Throws it. Oh, it was out there potentially as Najoku was the intended receiver. Chandon Sullivan, who already has an INT, makes the play ranging over. As mentioned, we have two of the premier defensive players in this game. The race to who has the most at the 100 mark. Thompson Robinson has connected on four of his last 17 passes. This one is caught by Elijah Moore, but well short of the first down. Hit by a Landon Roberts on the play. It's fourth down for Cleveland with the clock rolling. 6-13 left in the fourth quarter. So if you've watched Pittsburgh Steelers football all year long, this looks awfully familiar, doesn't it? It's the same movie. It is the same one over and over. And right now, the body snatchers of Pittsburgh trying to snatch another football game and take it back to the Steel City with them. Austin, the return man, Bajorquez to kick it. No rush. A spinner. Out of bounds. That was not the intention. Never got to Austin, but the field position is going to be excellent. Last two punts from our punters have not been what they've been looking for. That a 25-yarder. Steelers have it at the 48. Deadlocked at 10 points or fewer. On the move, Pickett delivers downfield to Pickens. First down catch at the Cleveland 40. Good for 12 yards. This catch is better than you think. Why? Because that ball. Well, it's too bad it's not within two minutes, right? <laughs> a booth review. They're fortunate Pittsburgh is. Pick it five for his last five, and that'll end the streak. He just bounced it in the direction of Najee Harris. Stops the clock with. Cleveland Browns led this one 10 to nothing. Steelers got the long touchdown run, 74 yards from Warren. They get the field goal to tie the game at 10, and now a chance to take the lead with five minutes to go. One more first down, they're in great shape. Robinson, motion man. It's a running play, and it's blown up. Okoronkwo pressing the line and hits Najee Harris. He just rocked the baby to sleep for a loss of five. And they signed Okoronkwo to be a pass rusher, a DPR, a designated pass rusher. That's been his specialty with the Rams in Houston. And today, he's made really good plays, strong plays in the run game on defense. So now it's third and 15.
against this Jim Schwartz coach defense. Pickett throws to Warren. He's been the playmaker. And Warren is chopped down at the 42-yard line by Smith. The top of the show, we showed you Miles Garrett and T.J. Watt and their extra effort, not just when they're rushing the passer. So Darius Smith emulated it on that play. Coming from inside out after rushing the passer, getting out into the flat, making a big open field tackle, and forcing a punt for Pittsburgh here late in the game. So it's Harvin who has had some issues today along with Bajorquez. They don't have enough good people. ones. And yep, you're right. They don't have the right number. Play clock is down to three. Snap it. Crochet standing at the nine. Moves forward and brings it in at the 14-yard line. 29-yard kick. Don't forget, NFL Today update delivered by Little Caesars. Time permitting, JV and the rest of the crew in New York for the latest NFL scores and highlights. It is Dorian Thompson Robinson getting a chance once again after the Cleveland defense does its job. Matt Canada, Kenny Pickett, hoping that the Pittsburgh defense can do the same for them. It's as conservative as Cleveland's been on offense in the second half. Don't expect Pittsburgh to back off at all here. They're thinking to themselves, we can make a play deep in territory and find a way to turn it back to our offense if they don't make the full, full play themselves on defense. Each team, two timeouts remaining. Timeout, Pittsburgh. Third Again, substitution issue for Pittsburgh. Too many guys on the field. That's the second time today they've had to call a timeout because there were 12 men on the field. And that one could really come back to haunt them. That's really got cranked up. Cleveland conservative in throwing the ball, not pushing anyone downfield. Everything's a contested play when they throw it. And then the pressure. T.J. Watt finally gets home in this one. Terrell Austin's defense has hung in there the entire game, has given themselves a chance to win this one. Hunt to the backfield, the rookie Thompson Robinson fakes the handoff, sets, throws, catch made, and hit immediately Kareem Hunt by a Landon Roberts. Clock is rolling down to 3.15 to go. Yards are hard to come by for both offenses. Kevin Stefanski called the plays in addition to his head coaching duties trying to find the right ones right now for DTR and company. And I know if he does throw the ball here, he doesn't want it to stay in his hands very long. That makes it difficult to make an extra move and shake free against this Pittsburgh coverage. It's a give to Hunt. Oh, the hurdle on the first down. He got stamped at the end of the play. But Cleveland is on the move after the 16-yard run for the veteran Hunt. I didn't think he has any worry about getting stamped at the end of this one because of what he did. He gave himself up, didn't he? He said, I'm going for the first down. If you're going to take me out now, fine. But there's the hurdle to get it. And there's the drop. Another one from Njoku. He was matched up with a linebacker, Alandon Roberts. Stops the clock with 2.23 to go. Second and 10 for Cleveland. Browns have two timeouts to work with. Shotgun on second down. Tied at 10. Thompson Robinson delivers to the outside. Caught by Najoku. But quickly tackled on the play by Roberts. Gain of three. Browns in no rush. And they're going to let this tick down to the two-minute warning. And face a third and seven. This is the two-minute warning. Two minutes. Jeff six and three. Baltimore leading the division at eight and three. Browns face a third and seven. Under two minutes to go. The pass glances off the hands of the intended target. Najoku, it's incomplete. And the Browns will punt it on fourth down. This, is, this has not been David Najoku's day in so many ways. You're right about the call there. I Just a tad high, but that's when you've got to come down with. That's what we call a gotta have it situation. 
and everyone knew it in the huddle on that snap. If he catches it, he's got a chance to pick up the first down. Instead, Pittsburgh's going to get one more opportunity. And it stops the clock. So Pittsburgh has a minute 55 to work with. Clock is now ticking on the punt by Bajorquez. Backpedaling is Austin. Fields it at the 10. Austin will work the sideline. And drop at the 30-yard line. 142 on the clock. A 58-yard punt, a 20-yard return. Kenny Pickett, 14 of 24, just 94 yards on the day. Thompson Robinson getting the start. Deshaun Watson done for the year. Fracture in his right shoulder. Warren has been the star for Pittsburgh. 145 total yards. And the Steelers have outplayed the Browns in the second half. The reverse was true in the first half. Exactly. And Kenny Pickett, we've gotten used to just taking his numbers up to this point and throwing them out. This is what they call KPT time. Pickett's pass incomplete, looking for Deontay Johnson. He hasn't been a part of this offense for so long. <laughs> Almost maybe surprised ball came his way. Two catches, 10 yards for Deontay Johnson. Second down and 10 with 138 on the clock. Six come from behind wins this season. That's the most in the NFL for the Steelers. Pickett, seven career game-winning drives, including fourth quarters and overtime. Second down and 10. Pickett's going to air it out, and there's nobody there. And they had man coverage on the outside, and he likes to say, if it's man coverage, you give my guys the ball, especially Pickens. And I think he expected Deontay Johnson to continue down the field on that go route with the safety in the middle of the field away from them and he broke off the route the ball falls incomplete 132 on the clock third and ten for the Steelers nine straight wins in one score games a franchise record for Pittsburgh die package here for the Browns on third and ten Pickett throws too high Looking for Johnson. The Browns defense holds up. And Cleveland's going to get the football back with 128 left in regulation. And Pittsburgh did everything right. They doubled Miles Garrett. They had an opportunity with Deontay Johnson. But MJ Emerson, with good coverage, does not allow him to come down with the football. Charles, that drive was 14 seconds for Pittsburgh. And field position wise should turn out well for Cleveland. Kick from Harvin, Prochet takes a peek up field from the 23. Prochet out of bounds. They're going to mark him at the 34, 47-yard kick, a 12-yard return. Her big on special teams. So play is something else, isn't it? And that one up there in Orchard Park feels like a lose relief town match. Big one, Jets and Bills, but we got a monster one right here in front of us. So it comes down to the rookie out of UCLA, Dorian Thompson Robinson. Just over a minute to go. DTR throws. It's handled at midfield by Elijah Moore. First down. Gain of 15. They pushed it downfield past where they've been throwing it. Finds the open gap and good body control and soft hands for the catch. Sling it underneath. Catch made by Hunt. Five-yard pickup. 53 seconds on the clock. Here's the first down throw. And look at him go down to secure the catch. Good concentration by Elijah Moore. They've been trying to use him as one of those hybrid receivers and running backs earlier in the year. That package has kind of gone away, and he's much more of a receiver now. And he comes with one of his biggest catches of the year. They need about 10 yards to get into Hopkins' range. This is a second down and five. 50 seconds left. Thompson Robinson connects with Cooper. Timeout call. 48 seconds on the clock. And he threw that timeout ball Cleveland. with no pressure on him, meaning he threw that ball like he was in the moment. And it wasn't a rookie with a lot of pressure on him. He set up and threw a strike right at the number. 
of Amari Cooper. Put it right at the two, where he can see it right into his hands and absorb the hit. Porter from behind. So, Charles, right now they'd be staring at a 55-yard attempt after that completion. The career long for Hopkins, 58, and he did that this year. And so far this year, he is 7 for 7 from 50-plus yards in field goal attempts. Hopkins getting himself ready. Steelers trying to come up with a big play defensively. We're tied at 10, 48 seconds to go. Could be quarterback draw here to keep it. Thompson Robinson underneath to Najoku. First down catch. That covers 11 yards. The Browns very much in business. Down to 32 seconds to go. Now what you're thinking is where does my kicker want the ball on the field? You have to know that as you're running your offense. Winner here moves to 7-3 and three on the year. Hunt the carry. He slithers through, gets hit by T.J. Watt. 19 seconds left. And Hayward Timeout punched Hayward. over. Timeout taken by the Browns. Hayward up on his feet. We have 19 seconds on the clock. And if they took a timeout, he doesn't have to come out. Cleveland trying to start the year 7-3. and three. They did that in 2020. They finished that season 11-5. and five. Timeout, Cleveland. Their third and final of the half. But that's it timeout. for the Browns. This could be very similar to what we saw the other night with Buffalo and Denver. If they're out of timeouts, do you run a play and run your field goal Please unit out there? Game clock to 20 seconds. Thank you. They're going to put a second on the clock. I mean, they're still in control yep. here, a second and eight. They have the extra down to work with. Here we go. Steelers have the one timeout remaining, might be using it for icing purposes. Here we go. Hunt in the backfield. That someone jumped on the right side for Cleveland. Way Harrison Bryant slumped. I wonder if it was him. It's making your life a little more difficult. But still plenty of plenty of space for Hopkins with the leg he has. Charlie game. Defense number 95 with abrupt movement causing the offense to react. It's a five-yard penalty. It's second down. It's Benton, and it moves Cleveland up five yards. They can still run the ball here and then clock it on third down if necessary. And you might want to think about it. You know, you kick it on third in case something goes wrong to have fourth down. Running play. And the clock is moving. Get up there. That's the key right now. Ten seconds. Down to seven seconds. Spike it with five. It's going to come down to Dustin Hopkins. It's fourth down. Hit the game winner last week from 40 yards away in the come from behind victory against the Ravens. If this goes through the post, what a spot for Dorian Thompson Robinson and what a grown up moment for him. Steelers do have the one timeout. This is from 34 yards away. Hewlett, the snapper. And a timeout call. So timeout they're going to make Pittsburgh, Hopkins think their about final it. Final timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. We know what happened last week on an extra point. Patrick Peterson blocked it. Something he takes no timeouts remaining. The rookie Dorian Thompson Robinson leading his team down the field. He went four for four on the drive prior to the spike. So Hewlett will snap it, but Horquez to hold it.
It's a 34 yard attempt for the Browns. Looking to go in front. Snap. Hopkins sweeps the leg. It's perfect. Cleveland takes the lead. There's a penalty marker on the near side. Seconds left. 13-10. Browns in front. Steelers have won all of these close games this season. They may have finally met their match here in Cleveland. 